um, simply because I've covered most there is to cover about pointers and dynamic memory in the C tutorial series. And essentially, the difference between pointers uh, fundamentally and C++ and C is, is very little. There's almost nothing that's changed. And that's re really is because C++ is backwards compatible with C. So everything you can do in C, you can do in C++. And with the exception of a few unique concepts, they really haven't made that much of a change and, and much of an addition to pointers in C++. Having said that, the way that you can allocate them and the way that you must allocate classes um, has changed. Uh, and, and so let me, let me at least start over or, or, or recap with how memory allocation was done in C and can still be done in C++ via malloc. So if I wanted to allocate um, 1024 bytes, it would, it would look something like this. And um, with malloc, the pointer type has nothing to do with, with the actual pointer that's returned. In other words, even if this was set to float, I'm still only allocating 1024 bytes. Um, some people would use size of here to, you know, maybe get size of float times 1024 if they wanted, you know, a thousand floats. But this argument to malloc is just the bytes. And then you would use those for a bit. And then when you were done, you would essentially free your pointer. The way that memory management works in C++ is very similar, but uh, you essentially have um, new operators, a new uh, new set of operators to help you do that, and those are called new and delete. So they, they do behave differently depending on specifically what you want to use these for, but um, they're very similar in, in, in what they give you back with respect to the same thing as malloc does. So like I said, this is how you, you do the pointer allocation and, and deallocation uh, C style. If you want to do the same thing in C++ code, you would use new, the base type that you're trying to allocate, and then if you want more than one, array syntax with the number of elements that you want to create. So what this does is this creates 1024 unsigned chars, which is equivalent of 1024 bytes. And then when you're done, you call delete pointer. So essentially, these two things are equivalent. The first way is allocating memory via use of malloc, and the second way is allocating memory via use of new. The major difference is the way new operates, size of is implied in the sense that what you are allocating, the size of the memory that you get back, the number of bytes, is always essentially the base type, the size of that type, times the number of elements you want to create. For example, if I wanted to set, if I wanted to allocate an array of floats, I might do something along the lines of floats f pointer equals new 1024 floats or yeah so what this does is allocates you know a thousand floats or 4k 4000 bytes of memory and it's not allocating only 1024 bytes like might be the case when I pass 1024 to malloc because it's telling me that I'm allocating floats it's very um object-oriented syntax in the case where if you only wanted to allocate one of these things, maybe like um, one short, you would basically set that equal to new short and you would emit the array syntax and you get enough memory for just one short. So it's a way of kind of thinking of dynamic memory in an object-oriented sense as opposed to malloc where I'd have to say, you know, allocate enough memory for size of one short. And this really starts to change when you think about structs and of course classes. So if I have a struct up here, um, like struct rect, and this is a rectangle struct, and it has a width and x, y, and a width and a height, if I wanted to allocate um, the struct for malloc, it might look something like this. Rect r equals malloc size of rect. There's only one, so you know I'm not making an array of these. And then when I'm done, I'd free it. But if I wanted to do it in C++, the syntax is much nicer with respect to object-oriented programming. In other words, R equals new rect, that's it, delete R when I'm done. So as you can see, new and delete are, are just a way of allocating memory in a fashion that really helps you you know, kind of not think so much about the underlying bytes, but just think think with respect to the fact that you're creating something and then deleting it when you're done. 
Um, the important distinction between these two things is that your flexibility or your um, ability to use malloc significantly changes when you start working with more complicated object types, especially classes and classes that have things like constructors and stuff, basically non-primitive class types. And to explain what that means, I'm basically going to pull up our interray example from earlier and load that into Espresso C. So as you guys remember, the interray is basically uh, a very, very simple, not complete, but for sake of example, implementation of an integer array um, and how one might use it. If I were to run this, it looks like I create one of these and I set it and do stuff with it and blah, blah, blah. When I never really covered how you would create one of these integer arrays dynamically, and I did that on purpose because I would have had to introduce new and delete and talk about that, and, and it's, it's a whole video. It's this video to explain it. So suppose I wanted A and B to be created dynamically and deleted at a later time. In other words, maybe I wanted them to live outside of the the duration of the call to function. Maybe I wanted function to do something like create an array and I wanted it to return the created array as a pointer and then I wanted to make use of that array as a call to create array as a function and for that reason I have to use uh, dynamic memory to create one of these things. So maybe I want to return C as a dynamically created array. So how do I do that without essentially returning this by reference and, and avoiding a copy and then lots of destruction and construction when it's not necessary? So by declaring C as a pointer, it allows me to essentially return dynamic memory that I've created inside of create array and then delete it later on when main is done using it. In other words, to create something inside of a function and use dynamic memory to extend its life beyond which, which it normally would. So how do you do this without malloc? Because Basically, one of the rules of C++ is that if you have a class that has constructors and destructors in it, you cannot dynamically allocate that class with malloc. You have to use new and delete. So essentially, what I have to do here is I have to take C, and have to set it equal to new int array, and then essentially return that, and then later on when main is done using the return value of this to avoid leaking the memory, delete it like so. Now you're going to notice when I run this that it won't compile. And the reason is because interray does not define a default constructor. In other words, there is no constructor for interray that takes no arguments. It cannot, it cannot be simply declared. It has to be declared with constructor arguments to basically define either another array to copy from or the number of elements in the array to use as kind of a base allocation. So how do I do that when I'm using the new syntax? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I basically just put parens at the end, and then I put the arguments to the constructor. In this case, I'm going to use it with a copy constructor from A plus B. And that will basically create the thing, and it'll work exactly the way you'd expect. So that by the time main gets essentially um, the, uh, by the time main gets the return value from create array, I can retrieve one of the values out of it and print it out. Now it's important to make note of the fact that because I've declared integer array and essentially C is now a pointer, that this no longer means what it used to. In other words, I am no longer calling the subscript operator of C. This call now assumes that C is a pointer and it's an array and then I'm accessing the 101st element of that array and setting it equal to 50, which essentially destroys memory and would cause the program to crash. So in this case, I'm going to use my set notation instead to ensure that this, this basically has the same meaning that it was before, which basically says set the 101st index to 50. I could also do something along the lines of like star C 101 equals 50, but I feel like this is um, less ugly syntax. So now make, making note of all the changes that I've, I've caused uh, to the program, when I run this I basically get the result that I would expect, which is the 101st element from an array that was created dynamically. So that's essentially how new and delete works when you're creating um, objects of classes. And like I said, just because you're calling new doesn't mean um, you know that you're just creating one of these things kind of Java style. You do need to call delete to make sure that the memory gets um, freed the way you would expect. 
So one last thing I'm going to cover before I tie up new and delete. Um, once again, this is not an all-encompassing video of everything these things can do, but it covers the basics for C++. Um, while I'm at it, I figured that I would take my usage of my malloc and my free and my int array, which isn't, doesn't always necessary, but that I would, for the sake of example, switch that over to using uh, new and delete as well. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to replace my malloc calls with new calls and my free calls with delete calls. If you, it's really important that if you call new to create something, you've got to call delete to free it. You can't call free on something that was made with new, and you really shouldn't call um, delete on something that was allocated with malloc. You'll probably ask, be asking for the program to crash. So the way I'm going to do this is data. It looks like I'm creating uh, int size of int times n integers. So in this case, it's just n integers. And the free, it would just be delete data. And everything should work the same, and it does. So nicer syntax there, really simple conversion. Looks like there's some cases where I still need to make this change. New int size. And that's the end of it. Memcopy is safe um, to use with things that were created with new, so I'm leaving those alone, and there really is no C++ replacement for those. Um, there is one more thing that did pop into my head that I feel like I would be... Um, irresponsible not to teach you guys about and that has to do with destructors and that has to do with the way destructors are called when you allocate arrays of C++ objects. Now that's a mouthful but basically I can explain that in a really simple example. Uh, I'm gonna get out of uh, int array because I don't want to um, I don't want to overcomplicate this. So I'm gonna create a brand new C++ file from scratch and I'm basically just gonna call this class example and I'm going to re, uh, make note of the fact that I'm, I, I need to have a, a destructor in here to explain what I want to explain. So I'm going to make note of every time a uh, destructor is called when example gets free. So at the very least, we know that if we create an example and that we delete it, we should see that printout. We should see that printout happen just once. Now what happens if we want to make an array of these things? Well, as you guys know, the way that you dynamically allocate an array of something with new is you basically say, create a hundred of them. So what happens when I do that? Well, a lot of things seem to go wrong here. Um, for example, it's telling me that I'm not freeing my memory properly. The program crashed. A lot of things seem to have broken. And why is that the case? Why should the program be screwing up? Well, when you create, um, when you create an array of something that has a destructor, it's basically an array of uh, objects that are not primitive. You need to put a array notation ahead of time when you call the delete, to let it know that you're deleting an array of special C++ objects. Note by me doing that, that I do get the 100 destructor calls that I would expect. It's not necessary to do this when you're creating arrays of primitive blocks of memory like ints, but when you're creating arrays of special C++ objects, this tells the delete operator that you are deleting 100 examples, and the destructors have to be called on 100 of those. I really felt like it was important for me to explain this because if I didn't, it'd be, you know, irresponsible and you guys wouldn't know how to delete uh, arrays of C++ objects. So really important. Whenever, whenever you're creating an array of something using new, it's good practice to put these square brackets when you delete it. You can even do this with primitive types and it won't screw anything up, but you must do this when you're creating arrays, uh, dynamically allocated pointers to arrays of uh, C++ classes. So I really wanted to cover that at the very end um, as a uh, last kind of thing to cover with, with respect to new and delete. So that's new and delete in C++. Um, I'm pretty much going to end the video here. I hope I uh, Yeah, see you later.